But the meaning of narcissism is vanity, self-love, self-admiration, self-absorption, self-obsession, conceit, self-centeredness, self-regard, egotism, egoism. Now, what I want to say about that is that describes the demon's characteristics right on the money. We're dealing with demons right now. That's what I'm talking about when I deal with all of this. Everything I'm talking about is the demonic and how we have to recognize the demonic, even if the demonic is trying to use us as a vessel. All right. Now, we're going to go to one more word. And I'm going to play the recording. Jezebel's spirit. Jezebel lies convincingly and never gives credit or shows gratitude. The Jezebel spirit uses people to accomplish its agenda. One trait is her obsessive passion for domineering and controlling others, especially in the spirit realm. Refuses to admit wrongdoings. She hates prophets, prayer, and spiritual warfare. Always wants to be the center of attention. The Jezebel spirit will try to infect and contaminate the person it is in so they too will operate with these same kind of evil traits. She will not repent. She is prideful, demanding, and manipulative, ruthless, and judgmental. Most people don't know they're operating in the Jezebel spirit. They're really good at setting the tone. You know, I need to talk to you about something. This is really, really hard to bring up. I need to tell you some things about your daughter. Now, this is a psychologist, uh, Dr. Romani. This is not a Christian perspective, but this is just dealing with the characteristics right now. Just dealing with the characteristics of a narcissistic personality disorder. Now, like I said, we're dealing with demons. We're not dealing with people. I just want you to see it. So if you see any evidence in you or anybody you love, you know what to do. You know to take authority over it and shut it down. Don't give in to it. All right. Don't dance to its tune. Now, listen, what she's describing is how a person can be talking about somebody you know, somebody you're close to, somebody you love, and how they warm themselves into a nice little comfort, uh, conversation that sounds very caring. I'm going to start her again. And she's just giving an example of how these conversations get on. But before she does that, thank you, Lord. I want you to hear this scripture. This scripture is what God gave me dealing with what he hates. And sometimes we forget this. Proverbs chapter 6 describes seven things. It says, let me just read it. All right. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through... 19. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, hmm, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Now, it said these six things doth the Lord hate, right? But it said, yea, seven are an abomination to him. The seventh item is he that soweth discord among brethren. 
Now let me describe how a person can sow discord and not even realize it. Not even realize it. Did you hear what they said? Did you check that out? Mm-hmm. What do you think they meant by that? Now I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to let the psychologist tell you, not me. I'm going to let the, the expert deal with this one. I want you to hear. They're really good at setting the tone. You know, I need to talk to you about something. This is really, really hard to bring up. I need to tell you some things about your daughter that are going to be really uncomfortable to hear. And I hate to be the one to bring this to you. I really do. But I think it's so important you hear this. They are that good at a performance. They are that cruel, manipulative, and exploitative to try to get in there and spread this kind of stuff about you. They may take arguments you've had, things that have been said, and honestly, they might even fabricate full-on lies. For narcissists, they're singularly motivated by power. And how do you get power? By getting everyone over on your side. It's actually quite childish, right? These almost sound like elementary school playground games. If I can get everyone on my side, well then guess what? I guess you'll be the king of kickball. I don't know what it is, but it can start young. But for narcissists, they're still playing those elementary school games well into adulthood. It's a lot of it for them. What motivates them is the win. I'm going to win these people over. But then they get all kinds of secondary gain because now they feel like they have more power over you. What was very telling to me was, number one, it was actually really sad to me how easily these people around this person were, could be manipulated. How easily that this narcissist was able to go in there and almost trick them. There were a lot of reasons. These were all you know complex family ties and everything. But the kind brother in the story was particularly devastated. Now, I'm stopping there right now. I remember when I was young. Let's talk about me when I was young and unsaved. I'd be on the phone calling my niece Peggy. Check out what so-and-so said. Ain't that some crap? Listen to this. He said blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I don't know why you take time up with him. He ain't about nothing. Oh, I used to do that. I was notorious for being, uh, yeah, for bringing dissension, for bringing criticism, for casting suspicion, casting shadows of doubt on people's character, on their reputation, on their words, on their motives. Oh, I was great for doing that. My mother was too. I learned very well. My mother was a master manipulator. Patty, you think your father is over there visiting Miss Buzzy because he wants you to have kids to play with? You got kids on the block right here. No, he's over there because he wants some, starting with the P word. Yeah, he wants, I'll, I'll just make it more general. He wants some sex. He wants a little piece of action. That was her suspicion. My father was in the where in the store visiting with her husband. But my mother was so suspicious and so narcissistic and so inventive of all of these things going off in her head. She didn't trust him with a, a roll of toilet paper for what he might do with it. So what I want to share with you is the problem with things like that. Hurting people hurt people. And this comes from wounding. God was revealing to me that what this is coming from is woundedness. We have broken people. We have people who have been severely damaged in our group, including me. And I'm telling you, if God doesn't get in there and heal that stuff, that stuff is going to hurt a whole lot of people. A whole lot of people. A whole lot of relationships. It could even run people from the church or from the Lord himself. If we're not careful by what we allow our lips to spew out. So if you are suspicious, the best thing to do is take your suspicions to God. He's the only one who can do anything about it. Think about it. 
Now, I'm going to play <laughs> what this pastor said, and then I'm going to read Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, huh, in a moment. The, this is the plot, the trickery, the schemes of the narcissistic Jezebel to bring this chaos and this drama, this you set, mm -hmm. setting these fires up and all stuff. That's the scheme. That's the plot. Mm -hmm. But it's designed in the in the in the satanic system, the, the dark world. Okay, it's designed to keep true liberators so people can become free. It's designed to fatigue them. Right. Absolutely. It's designed. See, you're a solution. I want you to understand it. You Before I go any further with that, the scripture that's coming to my mind is where God says the enemy is there to wear his, the sole purpose is to wear out the saints. Wear you out, beat you down, tire you out, exhaust you. You just want to throw your hands up and say, I quit. And I'm going to share this with you. The Lord revealed to me what was going on because I came very close to having a family meeting telling the group, you know what? I'm going to relinquish leadership and you guys decide who you want to lead you because I don't think I'm doing that good of a job. And the Lord revealed to me that was the enemy. And it comes from a Jezebel spirit. And when I listen to four or five pastors on YouTube, they felt exactly what I was feeling. And they said the Lord revealed to them that was coming from a Jezebel spirit. Watch this. You are a solution to someone's problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the narcissistic Jezebel, that evil spirit, creates this smoke and mirror so that you never become that, that you get distracted. And my wife's term was diverted to something else. Okay? Isn't that control? When, when somebody does something and has you to where you say, I'm just not going to say anything anymore, that's called... Control. He said, when somebody has you to where you say, I'm not going to say anything anymore. That's control. I had to repeat that because I can't tell you how many folks in our group have said during our meetings, they just decided they weren't going to say anything anymore. Because now you don't deal with it. No, you don't deal with it. You're, and you're avoiding it. Spirit, and that's what that spirit You're avoiding it, and, and then you become an enabler. Mm -hmm. There you go. You avoid it, and now by avoiding, see, this is why with Jezebel, the narcissist, you have to go right at it. You have to confront this spirit. You have to let the narcissist know, I ain't playing this game. You ain't running this show. I'm not dancing to your song. I'm, no, it's not about you. It wants you to get into uh, your emotions. Yes. And, and uh, when you go and, and start dealing with, you know, with thoughts and, and your emotions, it is tiring. It wants to tire you out by you, you know, dealing with, well, what did I do? Or how did this happen? So you're now you're, you know, trying to figure it out and you got all these emo emotions going because you got your thoughts going and you got your imagination is yeah. going wild. And that's exactly where it wants you because you're not going to deal with it. Because remember, now you're dealing with you. Which spirit Jezebel, this narcissistic personality does is what did you do? Now all of a sudden you're internalizing saying, yes. what did I do? Mm -hmm. You didn't You didn't do anything. Here's the thing. You didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. you, and you're going to have to listen. Listen to me. You, ha you cannot take this on. You cannot play in this theatrical event. You have to say, no, I'm not playing this game. But what it wants you to do is get so frustrated where you now you say, I'm done. You'll say, you'll find yourself saying this. I'm not going to say anything anymore. I'm going to be quiet. Now, isn't that control? Yes. Isn't that control? When, when somebody does something and has you to where you say, I'm just not going to say anything anymore, that's called control. Because now you don't deal with it. No, you don't deal with it. You're, and you're avoiding it. Spirit, and that's what that spirit You're avoiding it, and, and then you become an enabler. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, I knew about something. I said, no, I didn't. They said, yes, you did. And really attacked me, slandered me, and, and, and looked to rip my head off. Now, what he's talking about is how one of the members in his group was was accusing him of knowing about something and doing something intentionally, and it wasn't even anything in his mind anywhere near it. 
and here he is defending himself, wasting his energy dealing with a smoke screen. And they said, what well, was on social media? Well, actually, what I did, and I just did this out of the clear blue, like months later, I actually investigated social media to see if it was out there. It wasn't even out there. So you see what I'm saying? Again, this, this narcissistic personality disorder that is an operation in people. And again, I love you love these people. They just don't know they're doing it. It's because of their hurt. And listen, my heart, my heart hurts now for them. I, 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 they need deliverance. These are people that are unable to function in life, and we need to raise up deliverance ministers. Whose side are you on? Are you on the side of the Lord to help people become emancipated from their past? People have childhood hurt and pain, and they need to be free. A segue to go right into Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, and we are reading from chapter 1. All right, I got to read from verse 1. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. Hear, O ye heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Ah, oh, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They have gone astray, gone away backwards. Why should you be stricken anymore? He will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint from the sole of the foot. Check this out. Even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been a Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full, that means fed up. I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and fat beasts and, and delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblation. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I'll hide mine eyes. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Why? Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. 
Now, listen. We don't understand, but God does. He knows what drives a lot of this. He knows where a lot of this comes from. We, we come up with all kinds of psychological wounds and they're not being healed. We're tolerating them. We're pain managing. We think that we're handling ourselves and no, we're being handled by every demon that can find a little portal through an emotional scar and a, and a mental anguish and a traumatizing that's been done when we were kids. And they come in and the demons come and use us like little puppets, little puppets on a string. Our mouths fly open and the devil spews his venom out on our brothers and sisters, whether it's in our face or behind each other's back. We have to be careful. God says there are things he hates. He explains, he understands a lot of it comes from woundedness, but we're not going to him to be healed. We're just letting it have its way. And damage is being done to our brothers and sisters in Zion. There are many people who leave the church because of some of the stuff that's going on. They leave the church. There are pastors and leaders that step down from the pulpit because they get tired of being stabbed in the back and backbitten. This is what I say. The scripture says this. How can two walk together? lest they be agreed. This is what I say. Number one, this is not in defense. This is just a matter of thought. You have to consider this. None of you, and neither me, none of us should go up under the covering of a leader that we don't agree with. Now, there are some leaders when I finally got to the point where I realized I didn't agree, I still waited for God to give me clearance because there are some times I didn't agree because I was in my flesh and my little attitude. I didn't like being told I was pouting. I didn't like being uh, corrected. I didn't like the things they said about me because I thought what they said about me was what they thought about me, which wasn't that much. So I was insulted. At ergo, I was offended. And what God showed me is, no, if you want to really grow, you don't go till I tell you to go. Because all of this that's going on that you don't like is me making you see yourself and making you grow up. But if you don't want to see yourself, if you don't want to grow up, if you don't want to admit honestly what's really going on in your heart, Sometimes our hearts have a lot of venom and we sanctify it with the Holy Ghost. And we call it love when it's not. What did God say? I'll hide mine eyes. I've had it up to here. Makes them sick and tired. If God feels tired, imagine how we wear each other out with that mess. We have to be careful. If you are in agreement with growth, there's no sin. There's no abomination going on. I've never been completely 100% in agreement with any church I've been at. But I didn't run around blabbing it. I kept that between me and God because it wasn't about salvation. It wasn't about them stepping out and screwing the sisters and the brothers. It wasn't about pedophilia. It wasn't about them living in sin. No, it was just a difference of opinion about how they did their leadership, how they handled some things. That's all, which was not enough for me to leave the congregation no more than it was enough for me to leave my parents home when I didn't like the way they chastised me when I didn't like their rules, when I wanted the same freedom my friends had and I thought they were old-fashioned and fuddy-duddy, but I still lived under their roof. 
this is what I say. If you don't want to grow, that's the challenge. If you don't want to grow and you don't want to examine yourself, which we all have to do on a daily basis. If you don't want to examine yourself and take responsibility for some of the behavior you've been allowing in yourself, some of the words you've allowed to come out of your mouth, some of the attitudes you have masturbated on a daily basis thinking it was okay. If you don't want to deal with you, that's what this group is about. We have got to deal with me, myself, and I. You have got to deal with you in order for God to get the growth. That's why he said, come let us reason together. You have to look at it for what it is. Lord, I'm selfish. Lord, I'm controlling. Lord, I tell lies. Lord, I don't like her. Lord, I don't like him. Lord, I hate this. Lord, I hate that. Lord, I'm prideful. Lord, I don't want them getting in my business. Lord, I don't trust anybody. Whatever the case is, confess it. And ask God to help you. Because if you don't take your dirt to God, baby, you will never grow. You will never repent truly. What is repent? Change about face. I'm heading this way. God says repent. Uh-oh, about face going the wrong way. I got to go this way. Boom. Change direction. Repentance ain't about, I'm sorry, forgive me. Repentance is what you do about what you're sorry about. We have got to, in this body of Christ, we have got to be driven by love. We have got to be driven by truth. We have got to be driven by mercy. Long suffering, understanding, wisdom, discrepancy, uh, discretion, which means it's not always time to flap your jibs. There are times you may see something, but you ain't supposed to say something. You're supposed to pray something. If I see Lynn walking down the street with a roll of toilet paper on her ankle and is unrolling as she goes down the street. I'm not to sit there and say, hey, hey, check that out. Check that, check. Girl, oh my goodness. That Lord, that she got a whole roll of toilet paper on her heel. Oh, I know she's shame. No, you get up to her real quick because love covers a multitude of sin. Love protects. Love shields a person's reputation. Doesn't blast it out on the front page. She on a period and look at all that blood coming out of her dress. That ain't love. That's gossip. Listen, so here, Lynn walking down the street with a roll of toilet paper. I scurry up to the room. Lynn, 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 Lynn. Come here, turn around, turn around. Don't move. You get that toilet paper up, roll it up, tear it off. Say, okay, go on, you cool. She doesn't even have to know what was wrong. Cover her. Love covers. See, that's where we as Christians go wrong. We call gossip a word of God. Yeah. We call gossip a prayer request. Davina, pray with me, girl. Because, you know, uh, Peter gets on my last nerve and we need to pray on that because I'm I'm not going to have that. Uh-uh, no. You know what Peter did? Girl, yo, you didn't hear about Girl, let me tell you what Peter did. Peter tried, he told a lie trying to make it look like he beat me on all three games of shooting pool and brag. He, he made me look like a fool. But I'm going to put him on front street, girl. I beat him on all them games. He didn't beat me. What kind of petty?
pettiness is that? That's not love. That's childishness. And if we really want to be used by God, we got to keep our emotions out of this thing here. We got to keep the word on it. Flush the emotions down the toilet, y'all. You're having a struggle with your emotions? Take them to the Lord. And if you can't flush it, ask him to flush it. Ask him to heal it. Ask him to remove it. Ask him to remove that mindset. That mindset that makes you lift every skirt, every pair of pants, looking for the snake to crawl out, looking for the roaches, looking for the mice, looking for the holes in the wall, looking for all the little creepy crawly things because and it can't be as good as it looks. There got to be some mess up in here. Got to be some mess up in here. Nah, nah. Nah, 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 nah. When I go to her house, I'm a, I'm the first thing I'm going to do, go to the bathroom. I bet that bathroom's a mess. She got a pretty house, but I bet that bathroom's a mess. Always looking for problems, looking for the lies, looking for the phony, searching, scrutinizing, watching, peering. That's not the spirit of God. Discernment is not suspicion. And we've got to ask God to help us know the difference. Or we will suspect people on out the whole body of Christ. And in some cases, run some folks straight into suicide or run some folks straight into a backslidden condition. Totally. We got to be careful. Be free. And, and, and listen, I want to pray right now, just before we before we stop, I want to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we take authority over every demonic principality, demon. We take authority over rejection, over insecurity, incompleteness, the, the lies that were said when, when, when the saints of God were young, the attacks, the abuse, the, the, the rape, the, the, the perversion, the molestation, the manipulation, the control, Jezebel mothers, Jezebel fathers. Uh, generational curses, everything that looks to destroy your people. I, I take authority over this. I break this. Now, you need to break that right now. Break that curse. Break that Break that Jezebelic curse and that Jezebelic network that was in operation in your life and in your family. Take authority over that rejection and that hurt. Let it go. Unforgiveness, bitterness. Loose and let go right now in Jesus' name. I bind you. I break that, 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 that generational unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Some of you came from homes that were just unforgiving and bitter. Bitterness is a root. It's a root. It's a foul, wicked thing. It's gall. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that poison of bitterness mm -hmm. right now in Jesus' name. Loose and let go. Come out. Yes. Come out of these people right now in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. We break. We, 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 we send angels into Jezebel's camp. Break up that camp. Destroy it. And as the teaching of the kingdom goes forth, that the foul ground of wickedness will be broken up in Jesus' name. Now, what I want to share with you, I hope you prayed that prayer with him. I did. What I want to share with you, and I'm almost done. I am. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. Please, I bind the devil. Let me tell you that lie in the name of Jesus. Listen, I remember years ago when I hung out with my friend Edie. Now, Edie was slender and pretty, and she got all the attention from the guys. And I remember when I talked to my sister, check it out, we were un unsaved. I talked to my sister, and uh, I recognized the jealousy in me. I recognized it because I was heavy. I wasn't a lightweight like Davina and all you guys and all nice and slender. I was, I was a heavyweight all my life, y'all. And at that time, I was insecure about it. I was insecure about my looks. I had, I was ridden, I mean, riddled with emotional and psychological scars, bound up, tied up in knots, and it affected everything I did. So I would sit there and I would watch her flirting with the guys. And I watched them flirting with her. And my mind would start playing a dialogue. Wasn't pretty. Just like when I was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire, living a holy life, not dabbling in anything that was wrong. But one thing, I was dabbling in my mind and the Lord showed it to me. 
This chicken church, you heard this story. She could sing like a like a jaybird. She was like another Aretha Franklin. She had that kind of gift. I can't come nowhere close to no mess like that. That woman could sing. And I was jealous as could be. And I did not know it. So I'm looking at her thinking I'm discerning some flesh. I'm discerning her her singing in the flesh. I'm discerning her pride. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I got this dialogue. Look at it. She thinks she all that doing all that dramatics. Boy, I tell you, she really needs a lot of attention. She putting on a show, ain't she? Ain't no way that stuff is anointing. Ain't no way. Boy, I tell you, folks get up there and they be doing stuff for the Lord. And guess what? The Lord spoke to me. See, I'm going to tell on myself because some of y'all still won't admit your, the stuff that God is trying to show you about yourself. And the Lord said, you are jealous of her. I'm almost like, what? I almost want to say, I don't know what you're talking about. I was. Because as soon as he said it, I saw it. I was like, oh my God. I am, Lord, I'm sorry. I cried so hard. I was so ashamed of myself. I said, I ain't never going down this road again. And I stood up in the congregation. And I announced on the rooftop, I asked her to forgive me because God revealed to me something I didn't even know. I said, I am so sorry. I've been jealous of you these last three months. And God just told me just now. How many of you will admit that you're jealous of anybody? Mm, I won't hold my breath. So listen, this is what I'm trying to say. We don't recognize it for what it is. And when we get that little resentment and she thinks she's all that and he thinks he's cute and they think that they they got that going on and, and look at him over there. Look at this. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that ain't of God. They ain't of God. They in their flesh. I know what that is. I know what that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. They ain't fooling nobody. Ask God what's in your heart before you get off on a roll. Because while you're fanning their stink away, God may be looking at you holding his breath because he can't take it. See, we have got to be very careful. Another side of narcissism God showed me was wanting to be the center of attention. And how do we become the center of attention? We get dramatic. Whoa, it was me. They did me wrong. All my life has been hard. How can people expect me to hold up under such a burden, under such a strain? And then we come and we occupy the meeting with prayer requests and people encouraging us and people reading the word to us and people exhorting us. Yes, yes, feed me, feed me. That's what the demon behind you is saying. That's right, that's right, feed me, feed me. Because see, God was going there, but I stopped it from going there. I got you to be the center of attention. So I stopped what God was trying to do. We don't recognize it when we go through those changes. Or Davina says something, and I don't like what she said, and I snap at her. And now we got to go through this whole scenario of understanding and reconciling and explaining and la da 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 da. Constant stroking, constant stroking. Here's another one. Here's another one the Lord showed me. Mm hmm. Yeah, I remember when I gave a word, I gave a word of prophecy at church. And when I got through, my temptation, like I said, I'll just talk about me. My temptation was to ask my friend, what you think about that word? Did you think that was accurate? What you think? What was I looking for? Validation, strokes. You remember when I gave that word, girl? Look at it, it's happening right now. 
See, we don't realize the little subtleties of the flesh. We're drawing attention to ourselves. We're looking for the pat on the head, the pat on the back, how wonderful we are. Oh, we're where we would not be if we didn't have you. Honey, if I died today or tomorrow, y'all would go marching on just fine, long as you stay in the Lord. You can do whatever you want to do. The Lord will bless you, and I don't have to be here for God to do that. He could take this ministry way further if, if the Lord took me home and and, and send somebody else or use one of you guys to carry it on. But he has not given me permission to relinquish it. I am so ready. It's so many given turns. I have, my ego is not in the way, baby. Because this is not my ministry. This is God's. You are not my people. You are God's people. You're not my following. I don't have an entourage. I don't need it because I am not royalty. I'm a servant. And as Jesus said, I'm not here to be served. I am here to serve. And it nauseates me to see churches with, with all kind of entourages carrying the pastor's Bible and the this and the that and, and all these titles, apostle, prophet, da 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 and all these ego parades that churches have. We have to be careful. We have to be careful not to fall into religious mumbo-jumbo, religious piety, religious pride. We have to be careful. People coming in off the street are watching us. They're listening to us. They smell it. You don't think they see it, but they smell it. You ever get in the room and everybody knows your underarm pits stink, but you, you're the last one to know it? It's the same way when we're operating under demonic influence. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many folks know. They see it. Right off the bat. There are many that don't, but there are some that do. And the ones that miss it, if they're praying about it, God will show them if they need to know. Unless they're just going to use it for gossip. God doesn't want them doing that either. It is not God's will that any of us in this body of Christ perishes, but that all would come to repentance. Do you double check with God to check your motives? Do you ask God to check your heart? The heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? It ain't your heart I don't trust. It's my heart I don't trust. I ain't got time to worry about what's in your heart. I got enough work dealing with my own. All right. That's my love whooping. I hope and pray that you... Take it in the spirit it's met. And now I'm going to pray for you. And if any of you want to comment afterwards, that's fine. If not, that's fine. And we'll go into, uh, Davina has something she wants to show us. It's a celebratory good news thing about our group and all that. But for right now, I'm going to pray for us. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to bind us together in love and unity. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let us remember this one sentence when anybody's mouth goes flying off as, a, as the devil being the ventriloquist and us being the devil's dummy. I don't think this conversation is glorifying God. Help us keep in mind what you did to Corey and all the guys that rose up against Moses. What you did when the earth swallowed them up and burnt the priests that were on, on their side, Lord. Everybody that came up and rose up. What you did to them. Let them keep in mind that you mean it when you say, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. We are not to touch each other's uh, um, reputation. We are not to slander each other and backbite each other and cause all kind of suspicion and look for all the little degradations and all the little hidden sins like like we're the, the, the um, 
the I spy of the body of Christ. That's what your Holy Spirit is for, not us. We are not to judge. We are to pray. We are to love and support. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, help us be a healing body of Christ. Help God's church of love bring healing. Help God's church of love bring life. Help God's church of love members heal on the inner man, be strengthened on the inner man, purify our hearts, purify our minds, purify our motives, clean up our mouths. In Jesus' name I pray, let us not be used by the devil to divide, tear down, and dismantle your work. In Jesus' name. Send your guardian warring angels around us to protect us, Father. Father, I bless and praise your name for your love. I bless and praise your name that you do not leave us ignorant of the devil's devices. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. And let us be willing to agree, to disagree. Please, Lord. There are things different ones of us believe, and there are things different ones of us don't agree on. But the foundational truth is the same. Jesus, Lord and Savior, King of kings, Lord of lords, died on the cross for our sins, that we could live an abundant life. And he died, taking our sins with him, taking our curse with him, taking our sicknesses with him, taking our emotional scars with him, taking our psychological twisted minds with him. He took it all, Father. In Jesus' name, help us to relinquish everything he died to take and not pamper those parts of our flesh because we've been hurt. Because we've been done wrong. Because we're still bitter. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Help us heal together. Help us enable each other to heal together. In Jesus' name. And please help us grow. Grow in maturity. Grow in strength. Grow in stature. Grow in your anointing. And grow in our relationship with you and each other. In the name of Jesus, I thank you and praise you, Lord. Amen.